Yo, what to do YouTube, it's your boy JP Productions and I'm back with another fire informative video for you guys and girls. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you are new. As a basketball player, I truly believe that you should have a plan every time you hit the court. A plan to work on a move that you want to learn, a type of shot that you want to improve on, and much more. Many of you have been wondering and have been asking me, what is the best way to structure your workouts? And I'll explain everything that you need to know now. But first off, I want to say this. You as a player must know your own strengths and weaknesses. If you don't know your own bread and butter and you don't know your own play style, whether with your school team or just you in general, then you need to focus on playing more games to have a better understanding of your sharp and weak points. Now there will be three different types of seasons for you. For those who play for a team the off season the preseason then you have the regular in-game season when it comes to the off season that will be the best time for you to really dig down on your weaknesses and turn those into a strength of course you want to focus on improving in all areas of yourself but the off season is really for you to turn that weak point into a strong point for preseason this will be the best time to of course not only focus on all aspects of your game but this will be the best time to really lock in on getting in game shape so that means going to the track to run doing plenty of suicides playing some pickup with your team to get back into game shape now for in-season training some of you were taught that you should never work on your game throughout the season which is totally baloney man whoever said that just stop you should always work hard no matter what season, but during this season, you want to focus on everything, but don't go too hard to a point where you'll be trained after one quarter of a game. Now let's talk about having balance. I understand that some of you may be in school, so having time will be a hit or miss. Let me say this, you guys have plenty of time no matter what season or level of school you are in. I don't want to ever hear you talk about, oh, I don't have time. If you truly want to improve, then you'll create some time for you to get the job done. Whether that's sacrificing sleep or watching TV, that's on you to make that decision. Throughout one day, it's okay to perform both weightlifting, conditioning, and shooting all in one day. But you must have the balance. Doing all of these together sounds more easier and faster, but it's truly not possible. Don't get me wrong, you can do it all together, but I bet you with my life that you won't go 100% throughout the whole workout, which is why it's great to have some recovery time in between to stack up on some stamina before you get back to work. You can have a schedule like this. You can have a 6 a.m. run, an 11 a.m. weightlifting session, then at 4 o'clock p.m. you can have your on-court workout. Now it doesn't have to be in this order. It's up to you and how your schedule is. Feel free to design something around you. So how many times a week should you practice on court? Or how many times should you lift weights? That's a question I'm sure many of you are wondering. And my take would be to really focus on your strong points. If you want to be in a weight room only three times a week and on the court for six times a week, then that's fine. I'd suggest you to always work on every aspect of your game and take time throughout the week to improve that area but really key in on improving what you do best to stay sharp during the season. Another key is this, what type of on-court workout should you do? Let's say we're in the off season and we have nothing but time. You're out of school, you got no job, you're just living. So you decide that you're gonna be on court for five days a week. Should you mix up the type of workouts you do or should they all be the same? Doing the same isn't a crime, but I suggest you having at least one to two different workouts throughout the week on court. So, three times a week, you can work on your bread and butter. One time a week, you can work on your weaknesses. And the last day, you can use that day to sharpen up your handles or defense or whatever you please to do. Be sure to figure out your strengths and weaknesses so you'll have more clarity on how you want to structure your workouts. I get this question asked a lot. And depending on your situation, some of you may have a rebounder and some of you might be solo. I understand having a rebounder will be more smoother versus a lone wolf, but I'll still say this, baby steps. Many of you guys want to learn this new move and say, okay, I want to learn how to do this crossover. I'm going to do a hundred reps of it. 
Now I'm not saying this tactic is wrong, but I suggest you really starting off small so we could go we go for a number like 15 or 20. Smart small with your reps at first, then as you begin to improve, you can increase the amount of reps. Once you begin to knock it down in your sleep, it is then time to find another challenge. Now that I've gotten all this out the way, let's move on to how to create your blueprint. But before we dive into that, you need to grab a piece of paper and write down all of your strengths and weaknesses. After you've written that down, I want you to write down your top three go-to shots. Feel free to pause the video and start listing them down, or be sure to do so at the end of this video. And also, spam that like button, alright? Give me a thousand likes, I know y'all got it. I'm sure there are many others out there that structure their workouts differently, but this is how I structure mine at this time. You should always start off with a good dynamic stretch. Too many hoopers nowadays go outside and just hop straight into a game. You may be young and you could do that now, but as you begin to grow older, you will start to realize that you need it, because if you don't, you will end up injuring yourself. There's a reason why the top hoopers stretch every single day, every pregame, before their game. After a stretch, I like to dive into some ball handling. I like to start off with some stationary drills. Once I perform a few dribbles in a stationary position, I suggest to start dribbling off the move. By doing this, you allow yourself to get the blood flowing through your arms. So once you begin to start your workout, you'll be ready to go. Here's something that many of you guys should know. I know there are a lot of drills out there. A lot of drills you guys are like, man, there's so many drills, I don't even know what to pick. There really isn't a bad drill. Find a drill that works best for you, that you know has a purpose for your game. Find that drill, then attack it. Next, I like to start off by doing different types of finishes around the rim. It's important to have a variety of finishes as a hooper. You see guys like Kyrie, Steph, Steve Nash, and many more. They all have a variety of crafty finishes around the rim. I suggest you to start off stationary to build your foundation. Then after a few reps and finishes, you can start to do the same finishes, but this time, off a dribble move. Next, we have our floaters and runners. Once again, I like to start off stationary first before getting fancy off the dribble. No matter how tall you are, the floater and runner is needed in your game. If you're a player who likes to shoot a runner off a screen, then simulate that in practice and rep it out. Or if you like to perform a spin move and into a floater, then do that. Whatever way you like to get into this shot, practice it. Moving into the mid-range area. I personally don't ever shoot stationary mid-range shots because that's really a shot you'll never take in a game. Now, quick disclaimer, if you are a player who can't shoot threes and you have to shoot a mid-range shot, then that's okay. Keep building up your form, and then you can go back. Some of you may want to pull up to the nail, then pull up, which is fine. Some of you may have the fadeaway in your scoring bag of tricks, and that's cool too. Pick what you do best and what you do worst, then add it to this section right here. Finally, we'll move into threes. Depending on what type of shooter you are, we'll determine what shots you'll practice. So if you're a known player to shoot off the catch, then for sure, work on catching and shooting the ball going all directions. If you're a player who likes to create and shoot off the dribble, then make some space during your workout to work on shooting off the dribble. Now this blueprint that I just showed you was a workout that focuses on every aspect of your scoring and really keys in on the shots that you'll take in games. You'll take. Okay, you'll take. I'm talking about you. Not Bob over there, I'm talking about you. I understand building a workout for you yourself can be overwhelming, but it's something you have to sit down and really think about. The whole goal is to really focus on shots that you will take. Shots that complement your game. So if you're a player who wants to emulate your game after Steph Curry, then focus on shooting shots off the screen and focus on having the ability to catch and shoot the ball no matter the distance. Focus on your game shots and your weaknesses, then put in the work. The last thing I'll say is don't ever be afraid to make some adjustments to your blueprint. If you feel like it's too long, then chop some of it up. 
You'll never know what will work until you try. Be sure to spam that like button and subscribe if you are new. I really appreciate you guys that support me on the daily. Be sure to keep grinding and remember, fear is not real. It's your boy JP. Till next time.